All right, welcome guys to the first ever installment of the Group Up series. I'm here with three of Overwatch's finest. In the bottom left, we got, or in my screen's bottom left, in the bottom right for you guys, it is the former pro player, contenders champ, turned content creator, Chrono Dota. In the bottom left, we have the king of YouTube himself, Frito of your Overwatch. And in the top left, we have one of the bestest, one of the brightest, Streamers in the land, we got Faria. So, welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. It is an absolute pleasure to have you guys here with me. Let's do it, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. All right, awesome. So, guys, first topic of discussion: Roloc. How has it affected you, uh, particularly with your games, and how do you think it's affected the community? And general thoughts and feelings. Well, for me, I like getting you know my games in two minutes, so I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> uh, but honestly, if you're asking about like my opinions as a whole, I think that. It's a really good idea. It's a really good system. The problem is that it came out way too late. So imagine, right, if it would have happened, like, let's say, in Season 1 or Season 2. And then people would say, oh, there's a 15-minute queue for DPS. Like, I'm probably going to try a tanker and support. See how that is, right? But now, now that we're in, what, Season 18, I think? Uh, people are more, like, locked into their roles. So, like, people aren't going to go from being a DPS player to being a support player anymore. And that's why you have, like, the crazy long queue times, I think. Mm. So, yeah, it's a good idea, but too late, in my opinion. All right. Any other thoughts from that? I'd also add that uh, I think, well, with it launching earlier, they would have had more time to iterate on it for me mm -hmm. because I think there's, there's solutions and systems that you could have. First of all, I'm pretty sure League has like, uh, you're waiting too long for a queue for the role you want. Well, you got to fill this game. So buckle up, go in, and then there's like an IOU type system. They usually could do that. Luckily, though, and, and to finish that point, with Blizzard and the way they develop everything, it just seems like it's going to take an act of congress to move the next step forward to like improve it even better um so we're waiting for that essentially roll queues like step one it fixes a lot of things i think it would have fixed more prior to sigma coming out because now that sigma's out it's like at certain ranks you just sort of have to play them because the, the mm -hmm. potential in him so high and that kind of ruins the flavor of it i think but once the balance starts kicking in and they make other iterations and improve it we would expect it to be better. It's just, it, it isn't solved every problem. What I think it has solved though, oddly enough, is if you're a casual player and I try to leave a dual life with Overwatch where I played a bit on console, hardcore played on PC, try playing at different ranks and, and sort of get a feel for what a casual player does. If you're like the guy who does uh, like your Hearthstone quests or you know, you, you pop an Overwatch like that where you only do to get your loot boxes for the week and just sign in and have a game or two then it's great because oftentimes especially on switch like dps will be the lowest queued role which just doesn't make sense like if wow. you only play in ranked you'll be surprised to know that the queue times in quick play are actually great most of the time sometimes dps is really long but it's it's much more even across the board and you're more likely to get a quick game and with that i think the gameplay experience of role queue is most felt in quick play where mm. The game's now organized. You can just jump in, play whatever you hear you want. It's not really some hardcore meta thing where you have to win every team fight. And even if you did, like the, the skill levels are all over the place. Whereas in role in uh, ranked, we're still sort of figuring out what it means for the game and and the balance, really. Yeah, Faria, any any sort of thoughts on that? Because we haven't heard from you yet. So I think uh, I think it takes a lot of the chaos, like out of ranked, that we used to see a lot of. But it's it's also it also makes it true that, you know, Overwatch is a game where there's always going to be that element of chaos and, like, unpredictability, always going to be some kind of RNG in it. And it makes it so that, I don't know, as a DPS player, like, with the super long queues and with the feeling that you just can't carry like you used to, you know, in some games, you know, you, you can't really control your teammates, right? So it's all about, like, watching what they do and trying to help them with it or trying to, you know, just make, make the most of a rough situation. And it's harder than ever to do that now. Hmm. So would, you, would you say you'd wish it wouldn't have came out then? Do you wish you had the old system still? I like. I agree with Chrono on this one. It either has to, you know, come out way earlier, or you know, I I hope something happens to you know make it better on its next iteration. Yeah, because yeah, one yeah, one on, way, on. yeah, one way I like to think about it is so you guys know how DPS queues in high ranks are like twenty minutes or something on average, right? Now oh, yeah. think about how bad the games before must have been if DPS players are in queue for twenty minutes now. How many games were lost or like unfun because you had four or five DPS players? Exactly. Like reframe it that way, and it actually makes a lot of sense that it's probably a good change, like in the grand scheme of things. But yeah. Yeah, there just has to be a way to filter those players out, though. Yeah, the, exactly. The, prob the, the problem is now 
anybody, even me, who should be playing not the DPS, can wait in line to get in for DPS, right? Whereas before, if I hit ranked, I'm like, do I really want to ruin the game for everybody by picking <laughs> DPS with the other five people, right? Like, I normally would have filled more often. Now I'm like, I really want to get that combined SR up, so I've been trying to play damage on the five heroes that I can half play, and I'm adding to that problem of the queue times going up and up and up, where, you know, that, that's the problem that I have, right? Because you can click Q, I can go do my dishes and <laughs> take, <laughs> work out, you know, whatever. Like, do whatever I need to do and be back in time for the game to start, which is what I think a lot of people do, so I think they need to curate that. The, to Faria's point about not being able to carry his damage, I feel that as well, and I think the reason is, it like... First of all, tanks and sports are always so strong, but because the enemy always have them, it's like it's hard to just get around them anyway. Whereas if it was four DPS versus four DPS, it was more of a deathmatchy game, and a lot of GM games played that way anyway, especially on the old patch where all the damage were buffed to deal with goats, and so they're all really strong, and you can have these really scrappy games. And I think it's deep down, a lot of players want that, even if they say they want two, 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 right? And they say mm -hmm. they want like an organized game. It's, and it's also I, I don't know how to solve that. It's hard to get around the shields too. Right? Yeah, that too. Only Doomfist can really do so. Yeah, the double shield meta is whack in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, what you're talking about, Frito, I feel like that's more of a balancing though than like a, I agree. a roll queue thing, right? Because the problem is that, so before with quad DPS, you had like ways you can mechanically outplay the enemy, right? Like you can outskill the enemy. But think about it now in double shield, like how can you mechanically outplay the enemy, right? Like you... As Arissa, there's not that much. As Moira, there's not that much. As May and Reaper, like, it's way smaller than, like, landing a headshot as Widowmaker or, like, dashing in as Genji. Like, I think the problem is just that individuals don't feel impactful anymore. And I think double shield is an issue with that, not necessarily roll queue. At least that's yeah. my take on it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll get... We're, we're just kind of drifting towards the actual balance here of the game. And I, I do want to get on that um, later on. And I'm sure we'll have plenty of thoughts because it's a deep discussion. One thing I want to quickly touch on, though, is obviously we are in a way unrepresentative of a lot of the community, right? Because this, this is the biggest humble brag of all time, but we're all relatively <laughs> high-ranked players. Um, or I used to be anyways, I suck now. And that means that we don't really experience necessarily the same game that a lot of the player, the, the majority of the player community uh, experiences. And particularly so, recently I conducted a, a poll on Twitter asking players how they feel about life after Roll Queue and whether they're fundamentally happy or fundamentally unhappy with the game as it is right now. And 60% I, I, of respondents said they were fundamentally happy. And this is completely anecdotal. I can't say it committed. I, I, I uh, tried some sort of amazingly fair test, but it seemed like the higher you were, the more likely you were to be unhappy. The lower you were, the more likely you were to be happy. Uh, personally, I think it probably comes down to the nature of the games at the lower ranks where nine or 10 times they were mess they were they're, they're messy all the time right games in lower ranks are messy and games in higher ranks are messy but degrees of messiness right and being able to sort things into 222 at least gives some control to that some level of at least i don't have to play with a five dps clown fiesta mm -hmm. uh, and at least having 222 gives them some structure so how do you guys feel about the sort of rank disparity as it were with how 222 comes out i have a lot to say i'll go first then the beautiful thing about low ranks in Overwatch, and this is something that I try to spend a lot of time getting to grips with because I intend to teach these players how to improve, and it's exactly as you said. It is a much more beautiful existence because they reliably can get the same type of game every time, whereas in the old system, we were just talking about how, like, well, in GM, we could just deathmatch this and it'd be great. low ranked players, they don't even know they have to turn that switch on. I think any player in a streamer, a lot of my favorite ones do this for sure, the ones that I've learned from. They always know to be like, oh, teamwork's not working. Well, I'm just going to do wacky flanks and make crazy plays. And, and that's like the deathmatch mode you have to turn on. Whereas if you're... The weird thing is the lower-ranked players often feel more beholden to like playing with the team and they're like stuck in this mentality of like, well, I have to do this team play because this is what my character does. I'm a team player. And it's like throwing the whole game and, and playing terribly. But the good thing is because it's more structured now they more reliably get the reps of doing that. And I would say any complaints we'd have about the meta doesn't really matter in gold or plat because players don't necessarily maximize any of the individual heroes or the synergies that really break the game for the higher level. So yeah, it is kind of a paradise for lower ranked players. And that kind of goes into my point of talking about quick play as well, where it, it feels like quick play to me if you're, you're in plat and below. 
So it, it, it's uh, a lot more enjoyable, I think, and you can sort of just deal with your own play in your role, and it, it pretty much all works out. Hmm. Yeah, I think having to conform to meta is one big thing. Um, but yeah, I agree with what you're saying as well. But also, I think it's queue times, right? Because like lo the lower rank you are, I think the shorter queues are. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. But the thing is, in high rank, if you want to play DPS, often you literally have to wait 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes, sometimes it's like 10 minutes. But yeah, I think that's also why some high rank players like, don't enjoy playing the game right so now. Hard, though. For you, it's not yeah. so hard. I, I, I see that. I watch my DPS streamer friends, and they're literally in queue for 30 minutes while I've already played like two games. It's actually ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we're, we're going to walk to the moon, we go to China, we go to Korea, and then we come back, we're still in queue. Go to the store. <laughs> It's like you, you go off queue and suddenly you come back and it's like, oh, wait, they cured cancer? Oh, shit. Oh, uh, I didn't realize that was... But, I mean, it's, <laughs> I think the other thing as well to uh, consider in this is... Um, oh, wow, just lost my train of thought. Uh, no, what, yeah, what was I saying? The, that with the idea of meta beholdenness, I think that's another key element to this, is that in a lot of ways, rank, games in the lower ranks are defined by mistakes a lot more than plays of brilliance, right? It's very rare that someone does something brilliant and they carry the game. It's usually, and this goes back to, again, what we were saying about in the higher ranks, sometimes players know that this is my time to just go on flanks. This is my time to try something risky and try something big that might pull off and win my team the game. Whereas in lower ranks players, I think because they are fundamentally unsure of their own gameplay, they try to stick as, as fairly as they think to just being coordinated and teamwork and everything they've seen on YouTube and Reddit telling them to play a certain way. Um, but then... They, at the same time, paradoxically, their games are also defined more by mistakes and things that they go wrong with. And 2-2-2, two, 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 to some extent, eliminates that a little bit more, right? Again, in terms of what could go wrong, as we spoke about, the comp is one of the fewer things that could go wrong. Um, whereas in the higher ranks, particularly as well, people are a little bit better at adapting to messy situations, as Frida kind of alluded to. Whereas, where if you're running a three DPS comp, people are usually better at okay, I can work around this, I can try and solo carry this. But in two, two, in uh, lower ranks, people are not necessarily as uh, versatile in their play styles as well. Yeah, I completely True. agree. It's like it's like um, in lower ranks. I, I remember like back when I was in gold plat, it was kind of like um, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna try to make stuff happen. But whatever happens, happens. And it's like you don't really know how to you know, manufacture this sense of consistency that um, that you can in higher ranks when you get a bit more familiar with the game. Because it, what, it, what it comes down to is it, it's basically problem solving, right? And you're trying to figure out how to get over what the enemy is doing and how to beat them and uh, outplay them. And um, I feel that even even in high ranks now, like we don't have much of that. It's It's just, I feel like the meta has coaxed out so much of that element. And it's just like people people have less than an idea how to do that now. Yep, completely agree, hundred percent. All right. Well, since we're since we're kind of touching on it, let's talk then meta. Lots of thoughts, I'm sure, guys. But anyone want to open about with some large monologue about about your, the state of the meta? I think the patch was a good first step, that's for sure. And I don't know what Blizzard really can do if their goals are to look at the whole game all the time. Because I think the more and more we add more heroes and complexity to the game it's gonna be harder to do this balance for the for everybody whereas i think most of us in this call would probably agree that we'd prefer it to be top down balanced anyway and whatever ramifications it has on the low ranks you know it's not <laughs> like they really knew how to play the meta anyway but when you say that you have to know what that actually means what that actually means is like a gold player might feel it's harder to play sigma than widow or whatever hard dps you want to call out and i think that's the route they're going to have to go Luckily, I don't feel like double shield is always meta like it was in the last patch. Like, I feel like there's situations where one hero swapped or a, a, a team fight happening in a certain terrain or map, you can feel like you don't have to play it. Winston Ball is pretty sick. If the enemy's not running May Reaper, and then they go May Reaper, and then you're like, okay, we can't play this anymore. But so I'm seeing other things have success luck based on um, the mistake factor and just the randomness of ranked, which I think makes it more fun. But it's not finished, I think, is where I'd conclude. Mm. Yeah, I think the real question, though, is to see when do they do the next patch, right? Because I think one thing that, like, all of us are frustrated with is, like, how frequent patches are. And, like, I guess, for better words, how infrequent they are. So the question is, like, that was a good first step. Like, are they going to follow up on that in, like, the next, hopefully in the next, like, month, maybe in the next two months? I and mean, I hope so, but, you know, we don't really know. 
But honestly, I don't like double shield because, like I was alluding to before, it just like the lack of playmaking potential for the individual, right? So like you can't say like I'm gonna play, you know, pick a good DPS. I'm gonna you know you know headshot them. I'm gonna outskill them. I'm gonna one v one them. Now it's literally just like play with the team, shoot shields, go for a suck. If someone's out of position, shoot them. And then if not, keep breaking shields. And eventually you get a suck flux or you know a suck you know grab whatever and you win. So I mean that's basically the way it is now. And I think the way you change it though is you nerf Arissa. Because I, I also agree, Sigma is pretty good, but Sigma is really garbage outside of double shield. So Sigma doesn't need to be nerfed. I think you have to nerf Orisa. Either you nerf the suck cooldown to make it much longer, or you nerf the fortify to make her more diveable. I think that's what you have to do in order to change double shield meta. What if Player. we made Diva strong again so she actually could eat halts like she used to? Hmm. That wouldn't be good enough, though, I don't think, because you still have two shields to play behind. You just got to outlast with the two shields. That's why I don't think buffing Diva is a play. I think if you nerf Orisa, you actually indirectly make D.Va a better pick, if that makes sense. Because the way I see it is that people, they look to directly solve the issue, right? So double shield is, you know, annoying. So therefore nerf shields. But I think you have to look at the more holistic picture, right? About So if you nerf Orisa, then maybe, you know, Dive becomes viable. If Dive becomes viable, then maybe, you know, this other thing becomes viable as a result. But yeah, I think you have to take like a more holistic approach, in my opinion. Faria, you've been kind of nodding along. Do you have something to, are you in agreement with Chrono? Oh yeah, I'm so in agreement. I think, <laughs> I think that uh, Arisen just fundamentally is just a broken character because of um, when when you have one like when you have her alone, it's okay. But then you tack on um, how her halts like can synergize with Roadhog, and then how how like if you add another shield which you can deploy at any angle at whatever moment, it just like it just makes her a little bit too overtuned, and it's like how. I don't know. I've heard of I've heard of people suggesting that you you rework halt so that it still mm -hmm. it still acts as like an anti CC, but it doesn't you know make you an immortal god. <laughs> you you guys know you guys know how to, how it feels to shoot a fortified Arissa, right? She presses shift, she turns gold, and you pour your like all of your team's damage into her face, into her into her Saturn sized head, <laughs> and, she, and her health, her HP goes up. You know you know that feeling. I, I, I like man. to wear the immortal. Feels good, skin. man. That's all I, I can say. I like to wear the Immortal Orisa skin just to remind people that indeed I am immortal. Um, but Starcraft I mean, jokes. Exactly, Starcraft. I guess like half the community are like, not even half, that's generous to Starcraft. 10% of the community are like, I got that. Everyone else is like, huh? But, but um, I think as well, the thing about Orisa is, and I say this as a main tank player, and I spent a lot of time on Orisa, she just does not feel as anywhere near as, as skillful, rewarding, or in any way well-made character as some of the other ones uh like so for example i was playing quick play the other day with one of my friends he's in gold so we were getting a lot of lower ranked players in and against us and because it was quick play because it was a bit of a clown fiesta everybody was playing whatever comp so i got to finally play reinhardt after what feels like a decade and i was able to to do a lot on the on the game i'm not going to sit here and be like i'm the best reinhardt in eu but it was very easy to, to, to have an impact on the game. But if you think about it objectively, as someone who is currently Masters, previously GM, it should be it should be that if I get in the game with goals, I dominate them, right? That should be the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in a game as Orisa, in a gold game, what am I am I gonna go on a flank and halt everyone into slow moving bullets that do ten damage per second? No. Am, am I gonna be able to do anything? to actually win that game for my team fundamentally beyond good shielding and hoping they connect with my halts. No, right? And that to me feels like a problem. Like there should never be a character like that where they're a must pick at a higher rank and yet nothing about them really requires some sort of high level of in-depth nuance, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm actually glad you brought that up, right? Because that's also one of the big complaints I have about this meta. And I've never said that, you know, certain meta is the worst. Except for this one, I think Double Shield is objectively the worst meta for the game. <laughs> and for this reason, because the problem is that the easy to play characters are the ones that get more value. So usually in like a good game, right? So if a, if a character is really, really hard to play, for example, you get more value if for being really good at that character. For Take, for example, Widowmaker in Overwatch. If you're a bad Widow, she's kind of bad. But if you're a great Widowmaker, you can do so many different things. And you get rewarded for your skill on the character. But take, for example, the best tank in the game, Orisa. She's very easy to play. Compared to other main tanks in the game, she's super easy to play, gets a shitload of value. And then look at supports. Moira is the best support right now. She's also the same category. She's super easy to play sufficiently, but she's also like has way more value than any other support. And the problem is that like being extra good at these characters doesn't reward you with extra impact in the game, if that makes sense. 
yeah, yeah, that's why I don't 100%. like it. Same applies for DPS too, right? Like for example, uh, May and Reaper, I'd say that there's less mechanical outplays and less your skill matters less on those characters than it would on like a Genji or a Widowmaker. But yeah. Yeah. As much as, as, much, as, much as I love May, uh, yeah. Especially with her left click. But yeah, Frito, you, you were smiling. I, I think you have something to say. Devil's advocate this just slightly because I think it's it's easy to forget what actually makes a hero somewhat difficult um, for people because realistically, if I ever look at masters or below, like their halt usage is terrible. Like the mm -hmm. people were asking, like, well, what's the thing that makes Orisa carry the game? Well, it's good halts. And it's not just like, even at Masters, I see people just put it behind a shield to group them up safely behind a shield. <laughs> like, it's like the opposite of what you want to do, right? And, and so I, I'm thinking back to when Orisa was something that the community really loved. And that's like the East Coast comps to counter goats. Mm -hmm. Like that's I loved Orisa getting buffed then. And I was like, oh, yeah, great. We could run counter meta comps and we have to combine with whole then in contrast to goats. It was this highly skillful thing where you needed the halt to combine with a thing and hit the damage. And then it, that was all cool. But now in comparison, because there isn't goats comp running over you, you're like immortal with all the barriers in your in the way. Uh, it's less so now. I want to stress like if, if again, I, I don't I don't know if I'm trying to think what rank would I say is the cutoff where you pretty much I think top 500 is probably where you have to play double shield all the time and gm a little bit and it starts to like gradient out from there whereas last patch i think it was like you know you could push that way farther down where most people felt you had to play it i i don't think that's necessarily the case anymore but um that still doesn't solve our problem i'm not saying like <laughs> oh yeah they're done then but um because the tank players aren't necessarily as good at masters i don't think they necessarily have to play those characters so that puts blizzard in a tough spot because if if I'm right in that, let's just assume I am, then let's just assume. I'll just sort of like <laughs> nerf them more so it's even harder for them to play them. It's it's hard to say. I think ultimately though, I think we all are in agreement that Arisa was more fun and better for the game when she was an off meta cheesier mm -hmm. pick that could work at times, right? Exactly. Like that's where we want her to be. We don't want her to be like another problem of this as well is how the game has shifted to be about cooldowns and the fact that Fortify used to be a trash ability, right? <laughs> it hasn't changed that much. It's just like the game has changed around her where the other tanks don't have it. And if and now if you don't have it, well, you just get run over by these other characters that have been power crept since goats. And this is what we're left with. This keeps happening to Blizzard. And I feel like we all should see it coming every time <laughs> where something's like, please change the meta or Risa. Just keep lifting her up. Buff. Oh, she moves while shooting. Or this is better. The shield's better. Everything's better. She's just amazing. And now let's fundamentally change. Oh, knock my mic. Fundamentally <laughs> change the whole game. And then she's like left standing as as this queen tank that is just so much more reliable than the other picks. Yeah, I mean, true. I, yeah, I mean, my relationship with Arisa went from zero to hundred real quick, or hundred to zero more accurately, because there was a time when I was like, "Oh yeah, she's fun. I can play her on this map now." And then suddenly it was like, "You have to play Arisa or leave the game." And I was like, "Wow, I hate this character. Wow, I may, I want to kill yeah. myself right now." It's but not fun to be honest. Yeah, always. That's the thing with the uh, high ranks. You basically have to play double shield, like Frito was saying, like top five hundred. Yeah, the thing is, I think that playing meta like masters and above helps you climb, but you don't need to play meta in order to climb. If that makes sense, it just makes mm. it easier. But yeah, that being said, though, in top 500, if you're playing like West Coast, at least, you're basically going to get mass reported and mass avoided if you don't play Orisa and Sigma every <laughs> single game. So, I mean, that's honestly the truth behind it. So it is what it is. Faria, how do you feel about all this? Because you, you, you haven't um, said a little bit for a while. Remember, remember um, when Orisa came out and she was basically shafted to the sidelines and only picked on Ilios well. <laughs> remember that? Ilyaso with the Rodag Lucio, and I hated that map. I hated getting that map. <laughs> it, meant that, it meant that if the enemy had the Orisa Hog and we didn't, it, it it was like it's it's almost like Bastion, like versus a Bastion comp in that it takes very little teamwork to set up and get running versus how much teamwork it requires to mm -hmm. not die to them, to you know, circumvent them and actually beat that. Right, because you have to be, you have to work on your timing, you have to work on your like target priority and your shot calling and your like individual positioning from everybody. And you have to like, um, you have to like, there's just so many things you have to think about when you're on the team that's not running that super, you know, easy to just like plop down in the corner and be safe. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's every game now. Yeah. And in a way, like every game will have certain, certain things that 
are really easy to give value from, right? And I guess that's what often people consider a cheese. Um, yeah. But I think with the problem, anytime a game is in is in trouble, anytime that quote unquote cheese and easy comp becomes the best comp, and that everybody has to now play this comp, right? That that's when the game is in trouble because I think when it comes to things like Bastion, there are counters to Bastion. It's just that. Particularly, I know I know there's people watching this, and people always tell me, "SCB, how do I how do I counter Bastion, man? Like dudes wrecking me all the time." And and in lower ranks, again, people struggle to deal with Bastion, but it can be dealt with. Whereas, yeah, when you're playing a comp like Arisa, easy value, double barrier, and yet you're still at the highest ranks, still getting maximum value out of it. That I think is when you know you're you're in a bit of a problem. Um, and I think as well. So just to, I have a I have a I have a lot of thoughts on this one, but I think. The idea of balancing as well. And Frida, you mentioned earlier about top-down balancing. I think you have to... I mean, I'll ask you guys first before I go on my monologue so that I'm just not talking for ages. How do you guys feel? Top-down, bottom-up, how do you think the balancing should work? Well, I mean, I think from a business perspective, if you're Blizzard, you want to obviously appease the most amount of people that you can, right? So I don't know, because the thing is, I think from a game design perspective, top-down is much better. But I'm not entirely convinced that from from, I guess, a business perspective and making the most amount of people happy that it's the correct choice. I feel like it is, but I could be wrong. It makes me wonder, though, because it's it's quite clear that Blizzard has their priority with Overwatch on the Overwatch League, right? That's where they, yeah, like, 100%. most of the money is, right? Most, if not, like, almost all of it. And so I, I'm left to wonder, like, if if the Overwatch League, if esports, right, is, is at the pinnacle of um, their focus with Overwatch, Shouldn't they be ban- just balancing top down? Make it like um, what? What game was it? I think it was Diablo. That's like that. That just forces, or no? I think it's Dota. That that makes yeah. people go like, yeah, like you have to get good. You you just have to get good to yep. you know to play at that level, and you just have to get over that hump. And I think that's what Overwatch needs, honestly. That's why I like it because eventually the thing is, the lower level players, the, like the normal players, I guess, they get used to the fact that okay, they balance for them top down. And instead of complaining about like how they should buff and nerf certain characters, they just learn to play like with those characters the way they are. Oh, yeah. And I mean, yeah. that's why like the thing is, there's like a, a hurdle, right? When you first start, it's going to be really uncomfortable for the casual players. Like, this sucks. They only care about the pros. But over time, it's going to be like, okay, well, I mean, I can learn this character and be really good at them. And oh, I can still play the game. I just got to learn these characters. And it's still fun. But yeah, I agree. Frito, I can tell you're bubbling. I like, bubbling. I like you're, Dota, you're, big fan. <laughs> yeah, Chrono Dota, how you're repping his game. But Frito, I can tell yeah. you're bubbling with something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. It's kind of an impossible situation because as much as I am the first one who said top down balancing, but you always have to tread lightly with it because you have to think about how the players actually interact with the game. And I feel like most of the things that we say and speak about more critically are for high level players and streamers. Like all, all of the negatives that we're talking, we've discussed so far have hurt them the most, particularly DPS players. Um, in that group as well, but my issue is like, so like I heard earlier, uh, Chrono said, you know, the the best thing you can do to rank up is play the meta, and I just want to put a little asterisk on that and put the word learn instead, right? Because people think you can just pick a hero and have success, but not like I said, it's like, well, if you don't Arisa Holt, right? It, mm-hmm. You just lost all of your carry potential, and I think very easily for high level players forget what they do intuitively that lower ranked players don't. That's sort of the heart of where yeah. teaching comes in, where you have to like critically think like, why did I do this? Or when I'm, if I break down somebody's gameplay, they may not even realize they made the decision they made or why they made it or whatever. They just did it intuitively. So anyway, a lot of complex things because of that. When we, I think I'm trying to think how Overwatch felt earlier on in its life. I feel like it's gotten more easy or more casual over time in its Mm -hmm. balancing with just like it's kind of a decision making cooldown based game now and you'd think blizzard would realize that at launch it was way more hardcore balance wise in terms of like there's a lot of characters that just you went at them mechanically and you just lost or won or whatever and yeah like tanks were um easier in that regard back then before we had Orisa uh, halts and and Sigma skill shots, but you know they structured the team fight and everything flowed correctly. And to tie this into something that Bree has said previously, it's like the way I would describe it with like esports and, and versus casual. Overwatch is losing its identity in the process of all of this. Like there's sort of there's adding things onto it. The game's getting power crept, and 
we're just sort of letting it grow on its own without tending the garden and being like, no, or the game's supposed to like if Anna is worse than Moira, something's wrong. Okay. <laughs> and it uh maybe nerfing Arisa is a good thing, but I think they needed like nerf 20 things or something and just make start making sure that the heroes we want to see and are are should be best. But instead they have a balance philosophy where they're like trying to get every hero up and pick rate. And I think it's the wrong way to go entirely. You should never do that. You should never try to get equal pick rates. Instead, you mm -hmm. should try to get the gameplay to play the best it can. And niche heroes should stay niche. But at some point in the middle of the, the life cycle of the game, they were like, well, and it, to devil's advocate, my devil's advocate, <laughs> like reworking Torb and Sim was good, but we don't need them to be the top meta. Like getting them to be more playable most like some of the time is good, definitely, but we don't need to like make every character balance that way where ultimately we end up with you should just play Moira all the time and oh, yeah. just nobody likes it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really glad yeah. you said to that. Me, yeah. I, I hate Moira more than Orisa right now because I feel like I actually can <laughs> interact with Orisa more on just about any character, pretty much. I think Moira just gets away for free always, just pumps healing into anything I want to fight. And if, because if you think about it, those tanks that you can't kill now, especially with, uh, especially Orisa, do, do you think they play, do you think they're unkillable with another support? Like if there's a Mercy Beam on it, you're just like, oh, I know how exactly the damage breakpoint that I can get over that hump. Mm. It's an easy beam. It's fair. They're playing a lower skill character, but there's a limit to that power. Whereas Moira mm. feels like we, we, we had to increase the resource. Like <laughs> they basically, basically doesn't have a resource anymore. They've made it so good that it's like she doesn't have anything to manage. Before it was like you had to, there wasn't enough healing to go around. Now there's so much healing to go around. Everything's healed all the time. And that just needs to change. Somewhere, somewhere, Samito is uh, is fist pumping there for you, Frito. <laughs> well, he hates the he hates the damage orbs. I don't know if I agree with him on that. I but... I have died so many wacky damage orb deaths. I oh my goodness. All right, I wish I could show you guys. They're so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you need to make a compilation for us for you of just random. I will. I will. Orbs. That would be really good. Actually, <laughs> the damage orbs make sense if her healing is not as good as it is now. Okay, mm. so like if they like. She has this wacky cooldown that's super good, or it made more sense when D.Va was really good, too. But again, that's like them not scaling the game to how it plays now. And even to my point, I, I kind of agree that buffing D.Va won't work because we've got characters like Sigma who have a shield and a mini DM and does damage at range and, and just does too many things at once. Whereas now if you pick D.Va, it's like it feels like you're playing Overwatch 1 and everyone else is playing Overwatch 2, where they, <laughs> they have this more complicated game with kits that do six things and you do too. It's like, oh, I can fly and put a matrix out then get hit with a rock and die like it just it, there's nothing for you to do so i have no idea do we have more solutions maybe i feel like we do a lot of complaining well uh, i mean i have but yeah i mean i i just want to add one thing before maybe I'll, I'll let me be a little bit bitchy and then we can get to solutions um so let it out yeah let it this is this is a safe place this is for me to get all my crap out um so the way i feel about i mean i i, I kind of want to combine a couple of the things that you guys have said. One about what Frito said about top-down balance. And actually, Frito, you spoke about this in one of your recent videos. See, I pay attention, man. About Overwatch is having an identity Somebody crisis. Does. Overwatch is having an identity crisis, right? It's trying to be everything to everyone. And again, to Faria's point, it's at, at, on one hand, it's trying to be this casual, fun game. Hey, guys, we've got fun characters and, and animations and everything looks great. And at the same time, it's like, we're a hardcore eSport. We want to be on ESPN and everybody better watch. Here's 50k salaries. Here's a pension for you. So it can't, in, in a way, it's trying to be both, right? But it can't be everything to everyone all the time. It can't be in every mode that everybody is happy all the time. And I think my solution, I guess, is what I say is, is, that, the, is that the modes need to be a little bit more segregated. At the, at, at the time, as we're speaking right now, it feels like Blizzard wants everybody to be playing comp. Even if you're someone who plays two hours of comp a season and you play, you, you barely care about what's what's good, what's bad. You don't really care about the meta. You don't care about Overwatch League. You're just kind of dabbling in comp, maybe even just to get competitive points. And it, Blizzard, it feels like Blizzard wants the game to be balanced for that person as much as it wants it to be balanced for someone who's a, who spends 10,000 hours playing Overwatch and is a pro or a semi-pro or trying to go pro. And I think... That, again, goes back to the idea about top-down balancing, about balancing certain heroes, and that's probably why we've ended up in a place where so many heroes which are quote-unquote easy or require lesser input 
are so strong right now, like more in Arisa. And again, what we get went back about, you should be able to get more value the higher you go out of a hero rather than equal value in every rank, as it were. And I think in a way, my opinion anyways, and maybe the community will hate me for this. Sorry, guys, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do what's best for the game. I think the game needs to be balanced at least competitively for the highest ranks, for the people who, particularly for the Overwatch League, not even me, like forget about me, I'm garbage. Like think about the Overwatch League players who whose literal livelihoods it is to play Overwatch <laughs> and the game that they're trying to create for them. You need to balance the game for the highest level if you want this to be a serious esport because if without a competitive scene and without something that's engaging and fun, there's no esport, the game dies. Whereas competitive relatively doesn't even appeal to that much of the lower ranks of the community. Of course, plenty of people do play it, but equally they like the arcade, they like quick play, they like workshop modes, and those are still accessible to everyone. And in the meantime, games in the lower ranks, I, I, I'm actually from now, I'm going to refer to them as the metal ranks because that's a better term than lower ranks. I mean, platinum is average. So let's go metal, bronze, gold, platinum, silver. The metal ranks. Um, the metal ranks. Metal ranks. <laughs> How do you the metal ranks. The metal ranks. I mean, now it's cool to be in, in the metal ranks. We, we're changing the culture. Um, but yeah, like, like I said earlier, games are defined by mistakes anyways. And the game of... The process of, of getting better at Overwatch is learning and learning from mistakes and learning from being bad to some extent. We've all gone through this process. We're all constantly going through this process. So in a way, if a hero is slightly overtuned in a lower rank compared to a higher rank, like Bastion, for example, right? We discussed Bastion is particularly strong sometimes in the metal ranks compared to, uh, let's say, top 500 where people will deal with him a lot easier. That's okay. We don't need to then nerf Bastion because he's too strong in silver. Because ultimately, the process of climbing from silver to platinum to master to GM is to learn to deal with all these things. But it should never be the case that at the highest rank, the game is unengaging and skillless. Rant over. I'll let you guys talk. Yeah. I mean, on top of what you said, like what Freya touched on with Dota, is that it sucks to balance from top down for a lot of players at first. But eventually, they get used to it, and it's a great thing for everybody, in my opinion. And the fact that they just stick to one, I guess, design philosophy is in itself worth a lot of value. Because right now, like, we see a flip slot between, like, oh, high skill characters like Widowmaker are good. And, like, oh, no, now, no, don't be really skillful. Just play, like, Arissa and Moira and, like, shoot shields. You know what I mean? So I think that you should just have one design philosophy and stick with it. And I do think that top-down approach is really good. And I like what you added to that, too. You know, yeah. um, SVB, what you said about a lot of players, you know, that just like to play arcade all day long or custom games, all that stuff, people who are essentially quick play warriors, like, I, I can get the appeal behind that. And it's, like, like... Blizzard doesn't balance the game for like pros. So it's like more of a casual perspective for it. So they're kind of catering to that audience. But what the casual audience wants is lore. They want more events. They want skins. They want mm. actual content that we don't exactly get. I, I don't know. It just, it's really going to depend on what they give us at BlizzCon, I think. Because I think everybody's kind of in this mindset of like, oh, like the, there's this Halloween event here. Oh, it's rehashed again. There's like, <laughs> four new things. They made Zen walk. That's it. And it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm just hoping for more stuff. Well, yeah. Or we Overwatch too. That could be what they're all working on. Who well, knows? we will discuss BlizzCon and what we want to see and things from that. But Frito, I can tell you have something to say. One, so hit yeah, me up. One last problem with this is that I think from Blizzard's perspective, like I was a huge fan of StarCraft 2. I think it's probably the best esport ever. And yeah. I'm, there's I'm, others that I'm are a big number, number like it's, I'm a big fan. Problem is, is that after Dota, you mean? <laughs> Yeah, after Dota, yeah. <laughs> after Dota. Dota's pretty great, too. The problem is, Blizzard saw, like, from a company standpoint, they saw, they, they sort of didn't want anything to do with esports for the longest time and almost were forced to get into it just based on how big it got. Then they got into it, and at the time, back when StarCraft was out, it ruled the world in terms of esports. And then these easier games came out, okay? League of Legends came, and ever since then, there's sort of been, like, this rivalry between them, you know, and now it's going full circle with Project A coming out. Separate conversation. <laughs> but since that point, every game they've made has been this balance for everybody or, or you know, you could say the middle, but they do balance a bit for, for top level two. It just happens really slowly and they're like, it's almost an afterthought. They bounce for everybody. You look at Hearthstone, you look at Heroes of the Storm, everything they developed since that point of StarCraft kind of being the hardest esport <laughs> possibly ever, it's like, well, we don't want to scare away the casuals from playing it because they're, you know, you, you can say how much uh, we value Dota or StarCraft, but 
people don't play those games in the numbers that Blizzard wants to play their games, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, the only thing is Overwatch has characters for everybody. That's what I thought, that if you wanted to be less skilled, or if you, you wanted to be, if you were less skilled, <laughs> then you could pick those characters and have more success. Problem is when they run the whole game, right? Obviously, like, mm -hmm. this argument doesn't go far with any of us, but I'm just trying to give a bit of perspective of where they're probably sitting and why they make those decisions, because they just want to keep the players around, right? Mm -hmm. they, they want... The, mm -hmm. the, the metrics that they care about are, you know, the casuals playing the game physically. They, we, we never want, they never want to get it to a point where it's like StarCraft, where it's a game you watch, not play, because eventually... Mm -hmm. Then a game comes in they do want to play, and then they watch that too, right? Which has happened with League, where League's like, well, it, you can just pick it up and play it. I never got into it personally. I was into Dota more because it's the hardcore game for distinguished <laughs> gamers. Yeah, exactly, but, exactly. Um, <laughs> but then when you play a game more, you're more likely to watch it. And then you see the success they had with Hearthstone, right? Where it's like, let's dumb down Magic the Gathering as much as possible. <laughs> just make it completely approachable. And it was a massive success. So this is the world they live in, right? And mm. and Overwatch is trying to live in this universe and, and be in all of these different uh, places at once. And, it, you know, it's impossible to satisfy everyone, which is why I do agree they should have top down balancing. But this is why I don't think we're ever going to get it, my point. Well, too, That's I why think I'm like can... different formats. Sorry. Mm. No, no, go, I'll go. just lay that seed, okay? Different formats, hero bands, different maps, different game modes, a, a completely different approach to like change the competitive game so that it works for us and then the casuals can have what they want too. So that that's what I would say. Hero bands would do a lot, I think. You know, Frito, I agree with most of what you said. And you, you talked about just getting like the most amount of people playing the game. Because I agree from the business perspective, that's exactly what they want to do. Like that's their objective. And we talked about like the easy to play characters. The thing is, if you just nerf the easy to play characters a little bit at the top level, then you can take those characters out of the top level of play and then instead like still keep them good in the lower ranks, if that makes sense. So that way you have like higher skill tanks, higher skill like heroes replacing them in the high ranks. Because the thing is, well, even if you nerf Arissa is a high skill tank, but keep going. Oh no, I, I'm talking about Arissa and more specifically. But for example, like yeah, just nerf Arissa's let's say make Halt like a 13 second cooldown, something like that. It's ridiculous. But he'd be sorry, Arissa would be taken out of the top level of play. But they'd still be good in low ranks because you have that solid shield to play behind. You still have a suck every 13 seconds. So I feel like you can change it with balance changes and sort of like appease both sides. Because you're right, there are some people who want to play the game but not actually play the game. So therefore, they should pick like Arissa and Moria, for example. So, so what yeah. we're saying is the game. is a discipline, is the, how I would say that mm -hmm. with your qu air quotes for play the game. Like, like <laughs> learn the game and treat it like they, they want to be able to watch a YouTube video and know everything that they think they need to yeah. learn in, in five minutes and just apply that and without any exactly. adjustment or, or learning. Not right? everybody wants to try super hard in the game. And like, I can respect that, but that's why exactly why it'd be good to have those characters in low ranks, but not in high ranks. Because I think for high ranks, you shouldn't be a bad player using an over overtuned character, I guess, that's easy to play and being in a high rank, if that makes sense. Yeah, you should yeah. be rewarded for skill for being a high rank player, I suppose. Yeah, so what we're saying is a little bit more nuance in the balancing, and and I guess this is easy. Yeah, I guess that's easy for us four people sat on 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 our, our comfy chairs being like, balance the game better, Blizzard. But that's what we're. A lot of people complain here. about dying, but just point that out. Yeah, I mean, people people complain, people complain about every matter. Killing everyone. I was like, stop complaining. You don't know what's around the corner next. I tried to warn everybody. Play Widow being the top pick is a good thing for the game, but you know, we we had to kill mm -hmm. dive, didn't we? Oh, yep. <laughs> guess what happened then. It's like that. No, it's like the meme. Orders. It's like the meme with the guy who shoots the guy on the sofa, and then he's like, "Why would Blizzard do this?" It's like shoots dive. It's like, "Why would Blizzard do this?" <laughs> but uh, Faria, you haven't uh, inputted in a while, so do you have any thoughts on this one? Oh man, I feel like I I'm kind of dreading when when dive becomes meta again or whatever comes back because, man, like uh, when when the new the, when the newest patch came in, remember, um, there were there was a period of about like a week or so where everybody just kind of tried whatever and tried to play whatever, right? Including a lot of dive, including a lot of, you know, um, people who just constantly lock Arissa trying to play Winston for the first time in ages. <laughs> and um, man, like the, the Winstons would like drop their choke, like d drop the bubble at choke, like it was an Arissa shield and then jump like on a Winst like on a bastion in the back and then, and then blame the team for feeding. And it's like, oh my god, no. Why didn't you come with him? Why didn't you follow up? Yeah. I know, right? It was, it was your fault. Up, it was your fault for here, clearly. Yeah, my fault. 
didn't I mean, kill six. My fault. Exactly. It's like DPS. What are you doing? <laughs> but I think that uh, that actually speaks to a slightly separate point as well. That I was kind of this is just generally a pet peeve. Is that I think when one thing becomes meta, people forget how to play every other meta. And okay. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but like every time there's a certain thing that becomes dominant for a while, even if Blizzard do change some things and something else is potentially something that could counter it, people have now forgotten completely how to play it. And it's like, well, what do we do now? That's definitely true. There's also the concept of not knowing how to counter off meta, right? Mm. So it's a more complicated conversation. But sometimes someone can be using a pick that by your flowchart, Tracer, I was told by the meta gods that Tracer still wasn't good enough, but she's killing my whole team. It's like, you, you know what I mean? Like you have to adjust sometimes and, and that definitely has that effect both ways. So it, it can cause your team to play worse, but also you can get beat by things that weren't meta approved supposedly just mm. because of the chaos of ranked. So to that point, actually, um, something I'll, I'll ask this question for all three of you guys. How much to, the, to, how, to what extent do you think the community is, is somehow complicit in the kind of problems we've spoken about right now? Do you think that the Overwatch community is particularly, and I say this as us, as parts of the community, not like everybody else, we included, are we partly to blame? Are we a worse community than normal? Or are we about a standard community? Are we even a better community? How do we feel about that? No, I don't think the Overwatch community is like anything special, honestly. I think that the... <laughs> Overwatch community garbage, Chrono confirmed. No, it's just like it's the same with every other esports community, right? It's not like there's one community that's better than the other. Unless mm. you're talking about like small games, right? When you're talking about these big games like Overwatch, Dota, CS, like they're all relatively well, similar. Well, yeah, I mean, the I would just though. just quickly just to quickly interject. Yeah. Sorry, Chrono. Like I would add just as a I'm gonna be Frito now for Devil's Advocate. I would argue that the StarCraft community, for example, be perhaps because it's so much smaller, is a lot further ahead in terms of their understanding of the game and what they think like how much they follow the rules and the, the meta and the, and the play. That's also because you only have the dedicated players playing StarCraft. There's not many people that are casuals actually playing StarCraft nowadays. It's more just like the diehard fans at this yeah. point. That's why I'm to blame for that. That's why like when I say this, I mean like newer games, for example. Sure. Like in the past, you know, like five years or something. Mm. Um, but yeah, it just that the, what's it called, the publisher also shapes the community, right? So for example, if you have a publisher like Valve that listens to the community quite a bit and they make changes based off the community, you tend to have like a better community connection because everyone feels happy with the game, right? Versus Blizzard people, Blizzard, sorry, people feel like Blizzard doesn't listen to their criticisms in Overwatch. And that also breeds a more toxic community. That, that's my opinion, at least. But it's no different fundamentally. The people are not different. Fear, you're not... said there. Oh, go on. Fear, you go you ahead, Fria. Did you, did you want to go, oh. Fria? Oh, sure. Um, I think the. Uh... Our community is not like more toxic than others. I think it's about the same <laughs> in that there are a lot of like great people. I've met, I've had the pleasure of meeting so many amazing people that I wouldn't have if it weren't for this game. But there are also um, some people in the higher ELO community who are, um, you know, the people I'm talking about. It's the people <laughs> with like LFT, like 4.999, like DPS, flex god. <laughs> that that um, aren't aren't as mature. You, you want to drop any names? Cause some Reddit uh, hysteria for you? <laughs> nah, not today. They know who they are. <laughs> I guess I'll be the only one who says that communities are very different in my experience. Anyway, yeah. to the toxicity point, I think Overwatch is way lower on toxicity, mm -hmm. but I think like the it. expectations of where toxicity should be is higher. So like, or lower, whatever, however that <laughs> phrase works. The expectations of how clean a community should be are higher nowadays mm. because I'm an old man. I've played <laughs> COD and Gears and all, all the other actually toxic games. CSGO, even like Rush B, No Stop, Drop Up, you know, a bunch of cuss words in Russian. Um, <laughs> I, I, these are memes. Like I, some viewers probably don't know those are memes, but those are memes because the game is so toxic. And so those phrases are so reliably said. If you put on a Russian accent and say those words, like everyone immediately knows what you mean mm -hmm. because there's like a toxic atmosphere to the game. Now, the benefit to that, though, is that it's a more competitive game at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like the community, community in CSGO and some of these other games that we mentioned, I feel know the game is competitive and go into it with a much more hardcore approach to it. Whereas Overwatch, as much as I want it to have that, it also does appeal to everybody who, you know, maybe just want to play Mercy and Moira, and that's it. Right? Like that player is a much different player than the 
rush vino stop guy drop off i'm sick i'm gonna carry the team you guys buy for me you know what i mean like that it's a completely different mindset right because it's weird if you go on to like call of duty which is supposed to be a casual game it's way more try hard sweaty toxic than overwatch is like average (laughs) overwatch game it's like i'll just lean back man and if someone there's a lot of weird boundaries that i'm if somebody says something bad just report them that's basically what it is report them or even if like someone tries like very uh kind criticism i'd say Mm -hmm. it's like stop being toxic so Hold on a second. No, we just want to win here, right? And whereas in the Call of Duty community, they're just like shouting at each other constantly. So I, I do think the communities are very different. And they're, the problem is, where what does Blizzard do with this? I think the game kind of babies you in just making you comfortably numb with how poor you are at it. Because the truth is, over, to me, anyway, I'd make the argument that Overwatch possibly is the hardest esport game, potentially. Sometimes there's cheesy metas that are kind of easier than others, but <laughs> The, the highest cap of where Overwatch is is higher to me than other games. Like, if you try to play a, a skill shot character in Overwatch and then you go back to CSGO, it's like, oh, there's bullet spread and like the big hitboxes and the characters move super slow. There's no double jumping. And like, it, it's so much harder to aim in, and do some of the mechanics in Overwatch. But this, even though that's the case, the game just sort of floods you with misinformation about how great the game's going for you. So, would you make even the small play that probably was something that you benefited from from teamwork or whatever or the enemy isn't countering you it's just like all the pop-ups and all the golds and all like all the information feedback to the player is supposed to make you feel good about it which again this goes back to everything i said before is a good design de- design decision because they don't want it to be like starcraft where it's just mm-hmm. a feeling of the oh my god his army's bigger than mine. What did I do wrong? <laughs> this sense of dread and humiliation and the feeling of losing. And it's a 1v1 game. I can't blame my team. Right? Mm-hmm. The, all, they're, they're trying to get away from all of that. Protoss OP. I, 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 it is unless you're like Serral or something playing <laughs> Zerg, which we'll probably see at the uh, at BlizzCon this yeah, year. Yeah. But um, what was my point? I think Overwatch is old enough now where we can grow up and get out of that a bit. Okay, I think we do need to take the next step to be like, casuals aren't going to play this game forever. They don't play any game forever because we've seen Apex Legends just come in and just steal all the Overwatch players. And, you know, other games might do that too. And if Overwatch doesn't make this move before Project A comes out, a lot of these hardcore players that we're trying to ask Overwatch to appeal to us, they're talking about like Peeker's Advantage and net codes and cheaters. And it's like the abilities aren't, overpowered uh, the, the the staff has said where they're more utility based um w- players are going to go to that game and that's going to be the better esport because would you rather just imagine what project a even like if it does if it's averagely well designed that esport compared to overwatch in a bad meta in overwatch league like to me reaper doom is worse than goats and i thought goats was the worst thing possible <laughs> and now double shield is like a lot of these metas aren't good. They're just not good for esports. And that's got to be addressed if you want it to also be an esport. Because, yeah, anyway, going back to the they're trying to please everybody at the same time and nobody's happy in that case. So it, when we look to these other games like CSGO, they alienate players specifically because they say, you know, there's a vote kick option in CSGO, for example. They, they, <laughs> they alienate players. Oh, you want to you be an, a Deagle only player? We'll enjoy being silver, right? It just it, That's the attitude in those games. And Overwatch needs... At least ten percent of that, if not, you know, the full. At, we're an actual esport moving forward, and that's why I want to see new formats, new modes, things like that, where we can actually do that, and you know, mm. the rest of the player base can have their modes that they enjoy. So yeah, Wait, real quick, Frito. Yeah, Ram, go, sorry. Go, go. <laughs> so you're saying that the publishers shape the community, right? That that's basically like the crux of what you're saying, right? Because like, for example, in like Overwatch, like you said, they make them feel good by you know having gold medals, whatever these, you know, these things that release. What's it called? Doping or whatever. Versus games like, you know, we talked about Counter-Strike where people are okay with shit talking and you don't get banned for shit talking, right? So I guess the argument does come down to the fact that community is shaped by the publishers and the way that Overwatch is doing it isn't, I guess, conducive to like a competitive environment. Because you say anything bad, reported. You're not doing exactly what I want you to do, reported. You know, that kind of thing. But I agree with you because I really do miss... Yeah, of course, definitely. We have a very diverse community. We have a very inclusive audience. We have a lot of positives with all of this. I'm just yeah. trying to get the sweaty, try-hard 
the good things yeah. about that into the community as well. Exactly. That's the, really what I miss about gaming. You know, going into Counter-Strike lobby, just shit-talking everybody once you kill them, and then, you know, <laughs> just having fun. But yeah, you can't do that anymore in Overwatch or any other games, I feel like. Yeah. So, so we're kind of coming I'll back to this, to this similar issue here, yeah, as we said, kind of trying to please everybody. Uh, so in that spirit, let's talk solutions. Then we've been bashing for a while. Let's talk a little bit more solutions. What would make you happier with the game? For you, let's start with you because you've had to sit here and listen to us blabber on. So go first. Oh, it's okay. Um, oh, man, I have so much to say about this one topic. Um, go on. You can take as much time thing, as you want. The first thing I got to say is... Um, I don't, I don't know if you guys have been noticing with Ranked, but how many cheaters have you guys been fighting in your games? Because for me, what? it's been like this exorbitant amount. Like there's several every single day that are just like, they get to play and stream the entire day. They're like streaming themselves, stream sniping you and trying to get into your games. And they're just like inting. And it's just, it's wild that Blizzard still like, I don't know. I'm sure it's, it's hard to put out anti-cheats, but it can't. It can't be that hard when you put make that a priority for yourself. And I don't know, like that's that's is, that that's one issue. There's another issue of like if if they gave streamers some kind of tool to just like you know mitigate stream sniping a little bit, even if it even if it just meant hide and queue, even if it just made it so that the UI was a little bit different, it could help so much. Streamer mode, right? Yeah, streamer mode, something like that. Yeah, like that. So many other games have right now, right? Right, guys? And, um, I, I don't know. I don't stream. I don't stream anything. Yeah, <laughs> You're the streamer here. You should know. Hide and Apex both have it. That hide names and cues. Okay. But yeah. Well, then, some, um, well if they don't. To hide the usernames too? Yeah, I think so. Well, if they yeah, don't, it's right. certainly a good idea, right? And certainly something that would fit the category of making you happier with Blizzard. Totally. totally. And I think, um, I don't know, more, more communication and transparency about when updates are coming and um, what updates are coming and what their focus is on at any given point, I think it would help. Like, even even if we don't agree with what they're working on at any given moment, I think it's just it's just really nice to know. So we don't have just, like, we don't have to hold that hope in our hearts that something's coming when it isn't, you know. That's just my take on it. All right. I, what do you guys think? I definitely have, I have noticed more hackers, but I have to say, they don't bother me at all. And I think your problem for you is that you just don't play enough Orisa because Orisa <laughs> can't die <laughs> even if they Excellent. have perfect aim. You just put down a shield and press fortify and it doesn't matter. Just put shields in their way. Literally, I don't have yeah. the mental health insurance to play Orisa. I'm sorry. <laughs> Literally, there's three three main tank players here sitting like, I don't know what you're complaining about. Like, yeah, <laughs> hackers getting shot. You know, I'm just getting shot at Invis. I'm like, oh, what? But yeah, so uh, any thoughts on other, any of Faria's general points as well? Um, the three issues you kind of mentioned, cheating, uh, a lack of transparency, and also a lack of support for streamers. Well, I mean, about the cheaters thing, I'm actually in a Discord where we, like, where we I cheat? guess, like, no, where we say how many <laughs> cheaters we played with and how many hours, right? Just, yeah. like, reading off, like, the most, like, recent three, four entries. These are, like, streamers and whatnot. So 10 hours, four cheaters, six hours, four cheaters, six hours, five games with cheaters, uh, two hours with three games with cheaters. These are just, just like streamers. So that's like how it is if you're an actual streamer or a high rank player. Cheaters are actually everywhere. But yeah, that gives you a perspective for how much cheating is actually a problem in the high ranks. About the communication though, I completely agree. Communication is probably my number one thing I wanted to see from Blizzard. Like what are they doing and why? Because the thing is, I, I also complain about slow balance changes. But the thing is, I complain about it because it feels like they're not working on it. But if they gave us some communication like, hey, we're working on balancing this character, blah, blah, blah. It's going to take some time to figure out. Then I could understand it. Then, like, my other criticisms go away. Because I would know why they take so long. But yeah. I'd agree with that. A lot of it feels like they're in their ivory tower. And then they come down. And Jeff Goodman says, I have bestowed upon you the next balance patch. And then he goes up for four months or whatever. <laughs> it contemplates uh, and meditates or whatever he does. I, yeah, I, I think all of those things are good things. I think overall, and I... I'm aware of the fact that Blizzard employees do watch shows like this, and it's important for us to communicate to you and hopefully filter it in somehow that we feel like you don't care. Basically, mm -hmm. like like if it feels it feels real middle out balancing and, and and attention, right? Because if the things that would make me think they do care about streamers and and uh, high level players and high level play are a lot of these other things that we're talking about, right? Where there, there's features or, or they're attacking the, the queue time problem or streamer modes. It actually, There used to be more involvement with 
getting people banned. I can't remember. The company has kind of gone through some transitions with <laughs> who's working at what job or if they're working at all <laughs> anymore. And it used to be you could just send a message to an appointed person to deal with this kind of thing. And I don't know if that's the case. So I, I think you really need to craft this community a bit more. And because, yeah. I'll leave it at that. They, they needed to have a more hands-on approach to solving these problems. And a lot of times when I give these criticisms, I do want to say very specific, this is what I want. But in general, uh, I think that just any effort towards any of these things would would be quite helpful. Yeah, I think when you don't communicate, you leave the community to project, right? And and our worst fear is our abandonment issues that Daddy Jeff is, is going to leave us and, and, and not <laughs> care about. Like, is there a community manager still? I don't know. Uh, I'm There's not been sure. multiple community managers. Seen. They keep changing. We should know, okay? Like, yeah, I haven't seen the you would think we would know. Like, we, we should know, okay? Like, it, it feels like it changes jobs multiple times, but I, I wish they appointed a guy. Like, we have Jeff, who's like, you know, Overwatch man, but we need someone for the plebs of the, the play the game as well, not just like the mainstream marketing arm. Um, speaking of, of that, someone who can handle the day-to-day -day communications. And other games have this. Like, for example, I think to a game like Warframe, their community manager just kills it. And I, I don't really play that game, but I followed like its development and stuff. And like she's actively engaged. Like I know who she is, and I don't play that game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I forgot her name, but uh, that, that's the kind of thing that I mean. I think a, a, a mediator that sort of that's what we would like. Now, is that what Blizzard wants to do? I don't know. I I, I don't know necessarily. Are, are they? I don't. I don't actually know the answer to this question. Are they happy with Overwatch League being all of its presence on Twitch? Are they happy with that? Because me as a player, I don't think that's a good thing. Me as a content creator, I don't think that's a good thing. But maybe that's where their interests are aligned. Maybe they just think that's all they need. But I think that's exactly what they think. I think, think that's a mistake. Yeah, I also agree. I think that's exactly what they think that Overwatch League is all that matters. And I also do think it's a mistake. But yeah, and that goes on to a discussion we might have later on, right? Uh, well, you can. You could, meta, uh, I might see it differently. Okay. A lot of people want to watch ranked and good ranked, but because ranked isn't great and streamers can't get games, well, why would they? So, right, Colonel, you yeah. can go. You go now, man. Pop off. Let's go. Oh yeah. man, yeah. Well, the thing is, actually, let me turn this thing off. Turn it up. Turn it up. Let's go. All right. So is that basically, a smoke machine. Now it's my tea maker and oh, my kettle. May as well um, be. So, so I think. A big problem with all this is just the way Blizzard sees their game, right? And at this point, I think they've put so much into franchising and they only care about basically the Overwatch League. And everything else comes as sort of like secondary. And that's my opinion, because the thing is, they, I think that's where they get most of their revenue nowadays. I could be wrong. And all they care about is Overwatch League. They don't care about the casual player base. They're basically coasting until, you know, Overwatch League eventually dies. It, oh man, I can't explain this so eloquently <laughs> right now. It, it's taking like 20 minutes, but... Basically, they've already secured investors for the Overwatch League. If Overwatch League fails, the, what's it called, the down, the con, the, what's the word? The liability falls on the people that invested, not into the Overwatch League or into Blizzard. So basically, Blizzard doesn't care if Overwatch League fails or not, because they're not the ones that are going to take the financial fall for that. Mm. So because of that, I think they're just going to try to, you know, release Overwatch 2 while it's still hot. And eventually, Overwatch League is going to, you know, go down within like four or five years. And they're just going to move on to make their next game. This might be such a hot take, but I'm just being entirely genuine about what I really think. Because, well, again, it feels like they don't care about the rest of the community, right? It's like, why don't they balance things better? Why don't they do better stuff for community engagement? Why don't they have any, like, um, casual content, right? So, like, we talk about game modes or anything like that. Like, why is everything on the back burner except Overwatch League? And then on top of that, they don't care about competition necessarily. Because if you look at contenders, they also put no effort whatsoever into contenders, which is basically the what feeds into Overwatch League, the players. They don't put any effort into that. They actually like done stuff that sh kind of like that shuts down any kind of um, potential for community tournaments and you know like lower tiers of like competition. Yeah, like, exactly. Restrictions of tournaments, all that other stuff. It's crazy. And the reason is about that is because that lets them make more money, more money from the Overwatch League. Because I'm sure they signed exclusivity deals or something for saying like, for example, Coca Cola. This is a completely random sponsor. Um, that you have, we're going to represent you in all you know tier one Overwatch competitions. So therefore, they can't let anything pop up that is a competitor to Overwatch League. Because therefore, they're, the people that invested into Overwatch League, their investments would be threatened by that, right? Because for example, if Apex popped up, right? You could easily sign an Apex team for probably like 200k. Easily. But why would you pay 20 million for an Overwatch League slot 
when you could pay an Apex team for similar exposure for 200k. This is where it all ties back to business, in my opinion. But yeah, it's a tough conversation to have. Bring down all business. Let's go. Anarchy. Yeah. Um, but the I thing mean, is, I don't blame them, though. I mean, the thing is, business is business, and like they're the ones that made the game, so ultimately they have the right to do whatever they like. This is just like my honest opinion. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you, you sort of vented there, and if, if you... If in four years' time Overwatch dies, we have it on record. Chrono said it first. Yeah, but, yo, clip it, Jack. Clip it. Let's clip go. Clip it. Clip it. Let's go. Freshness. But does everyone sort of? How does everyone feel about the thoughts that that Chrono's kind of expressed there? Monkey ass. Frito, for here. Uh, Any... Frito's thinking. It's, it's rough because I think the the dev team and the Overwatch League team, I think we often forget, are two separate entities, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like there's some go between, obviously, but Largely, developers want to make a game that they enjoy and the masses will play, whereas, which is sort of the balancing point. And the eSport, I mean, I kind of don't know what they want. I think they just want the viewers to come in and write. Like, I, I, I don't understand the tension between those two, but my point is there is one, and it, I don't know how to navigate that personally. I, I do think without structural change in... You know, Overwatch with competition coming in to the fray. I feel like there's a lot of hangers on to Overwatch just because they love pl uh, a lot of viewers and and players of the game love it's the fantasy of it. What'd you say? And it's all we're good at. Oh, it's all we're good at. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like the game for 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 the community that plays it, but they don't play it and grind it as much. Maybe that's what. Overwatch wants. So I, I I do foresee a world where the league can succeed without the game succeeding because it's already kind of been doing that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like the, the the league has gotten way more views than I think I'd expect it to get, judging by the health of the game. But to me, that's not a good thing. Like that like I would like to see both succeeding. And I think you can have both, but it it takes sacrificing and, and alienating some people, unfortunately, because it, you know, if if super easy characters aren't incredibly strong, right? Because the, the the thing is, when we talk about like balance in that direction, we forget the ramifications it has on players who all of a sudden feel like they're now even worse than they were before. There was a lot of players when Diva was by far the best character in the game, right? Competitively speaking, in gold, that fundamentally couldn't play her. Like I, I it's hard to imagine what that looks like and how bad that has you have to play, right? So I'm like thinking like everything wrong, sniping from afar, taking poke to the face constantly, wasting DM for nothing, and you just have more and more DM, but still, it, you know, it, so that's what I'm trying to say. You can, you can think of that as Moira or, you know, the Mercy meta or whatever. We want those players in the game playing these heroes that are easier, but as soon as they like beat them down to be like hard for golds, then they're all of a sudden actually silver or bronze. And maybe they were supposed to be there the whole time. But my point is there's like that feeling of loss aversion. There's, there's you know, it's tough. Like, do they drop out of the game and just go play Candy Crush or something? I, I, I don't know. I don't understand the business of this enough. I understand competitive games because that's where I'm from. And I think Overwatch is just, it's mixed. It's wearing too many hats. It feels mm -hmm. as if, um, it feels almost as if um, like the, like the big wigs at Activision who now own Blizzard uh, have no understanding of gaming and are like just making weird decisions because, you know, everything that we suggested so far to improve the game and make it better for everyone, um, including like the balancing, including the the like the more communication, more transparency, everything, it will all make for a better esport game and it makes the Overwatch League stronger. And you know, like if the Overwatch League can be this successful already with a season full of nothing but like pixel vomit goats <laughs> like just two teams running at each other and just like particle effects everywhere and then ending off with double shields all the time like if they can get that many people to watch and be fans of that imagine if we actually have an exciting game where like there's constant counterplay there's constant variety like there are like individual metas for every single map and maybe additional competitive game modes that aren't just like payload like king of the hill and a hybrid and 2cp right that would be so exciting but mm. I think you have to get balancing in check first, right? Because the more yeah. complex you add, right, like maps and heroes and stuff, the harder it gets to balance. And I think right now they just need to get their balancing on lock first. 
and then maybe they can start expanding because I th think that's just like the core criticism, right? Like, we can talk about esports all we want, but again, the casual player doesn't really care about that. Mm. So basically, what I said is important for understanding the business model of Blizzard and like why they're, at least in my opinion, like why they're running it the way they do. But ultimately, if you make balance changes better, everyone's going to benefit. People in Overwatch League are going to have more fun. People like casual players are going to have more fun. And yeah, and just like why not put in a little bit more investment into the development team, or just like make them, you know, produce more work? Because again, I don't know. And that's just a lack of communication where I have to assume a lot of these things or guess about what's going on. Yeah, again, it just all comes back to that, right? We're all left to guess. We're all just wondering mm -hmm. because we don't know because Blizzard won't tell us. Uh, and I'm resisting top every... Secret. I'm <laughs> Exactly, top secret. Sombra, Sombra files. Mm -hmm. But I'm resisting every urge to bring up uh, the implementation of a captain's mode and the, the, the mods in my server in particular will be sick of this because I've been doing trial runs with them and they are all sick of me going on and on about it. But I think I, I won't go too much into it because it's, it's an entirely separate discussion. But I think moving towards more changes, as you guys are kind of touching on there, I don't think 222 is the final step. I think we need more in terms of where the game needs to go. So back to the discussion of like how we would improve the game. I think there needs to be fundamentally more structural changes. But I know that that's a bit of a considering how slow balance like changes have come already. I know that's a bit hopeful. So in, in the short term, I'd like to see them reverse the changes on queuing together. And I'd like to see them, ideally, allow six tags to queue without punishment. And I know, Frida, you've spoken about this before, but I would like to see people queue as a six and climb and be rewarded for playing well. Because I think one of the problems, the biggest problems, I think, with, with the latter in particular, is that it you can get to top 500 and have little to no clue how to play in a team. And, you know, this, this, there's a lot of players like this, and I'm sure we all know them by experience or by just watching. But that's, that's fundamentally, again, it, it, to me, it speaks of a broken system somewhere. You, like, there's other games where if you climb in the ladder, you're probably confirmed very good, you're ready to go pro. I don't think that's the case in Overwatch. Like, you, you, you can start to go pro, but you off, quite often you, you're not even clued in on any of half the things you have to do. So I would like to see the game actually reward people for playing as, as a team. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Mm. I'm not sure I entirely agree, to be honest. Because the thing is, if, for example, in solo queue, if you play solo queue and you climb up to top 500, like you deserve to be top 500, right? It's a free market system. You won more games than you lost. You had a good win rate. So I feel like there is a reason they're at that high rank. So is so is being a good team player more important than being a good mechanical player then? I'm trying to see like where you assign these values, right? Because in my opinion, if someone climbs up to a rank they are solo queuing, they deserve to be at that rank. So you're saying it shouldn't happen because they can't play with the team? Like, well, what's the what I'm saying here? is that the kind of the priorities are a little bit off whack. Here's what I'm saying is that you want to prioritize. If, if the goal is to create a path for, if the goal is to create a path to pro, right? If the goal is for mm -hmm. someone to pick up the game, start playing ranked, and then when they reach the top of rank, quote unquote, they are ready to go pro, and then they start shifting into the, the semi pros and the pro scenes, then you need to create a player at the end of the of the ladder process who is ready to go pro, and. I think you're better going to achieve that if you prioritize both teamwork. I mean, obviously, if you added team queues in, it's not like a bunch of mechanically garbage players are going to reach top 500. You still have to have excellent mechanical ability. It's just that there's at the moment little to no priority on being able to, to coordinate with your team, to communicate well, and generally understand team play. Whereas I think if you allow people, or if you force people in a way to, to queue up more together you're going to end up with a more rounded article at the end of the day, which then allows for an easier transition. But that's just my opinion. Colonel, you probably okay. are closer to the scene, so you would know better. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because this goes into like what prepares somebody to be a pro player or a contenders player, right? And the thing is, so on the surface, it might seem like you need to be a good team player, right? To be on a good contenders team mm. or whatever, to be pro. But that's not really the case when you look at how players get scouted. Usually, like if you're asking a recruiter, someone looking for players for their team, they're going to look at people who are mechanical gods first, and they have the ability to learn. They don't give a shit if like you're a good team communicator or whatever, for the most part, unless you're being the IGL, in-game leader. Um, so yeah, that's why I feel like mechanical skill is super important. And like just because you can play as a team doesn't mean you're ready for pro. In fact, somebody who's a good team player and has like slightly... So, wait, let me see. If someone, someone is a good team player, but they have slightly above average mechanics, that person is never going to get picked up over the guy with really good mechanics and he has the ability to learn, but he doesn't have any team experience, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because they were talking about how, how to transition into pro. That's the way that you do it. Um, but assuming that you are right, which you could be. I mean, it's just a preference thing, I guess. Um, how would you fix that then? 
Well, like so I how said, would you I make think... it so that teamwork gets rewarded? Well, like I said, I think if you if you st take away the like at the moment, if you queue in a six stack, they're going to put you against another six stack, which means you are already in a way playing a harder game than the same rank. Other players of the same rank. So if you allow six stacks to come up against anybody, well, now you you either learn how to 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 beat a, a coordinated team or you learn to play in one. That's... Well, that's the thing that happened in high ranks before, though. Uh, back when stacking was allowed, you'd have a lot of these like you know three, four, five, six stacks at three in the morning, and they just ruin the games for everybody. Yeah, it now, only works at the like, highest rank, like, though. It, this is one change that was only for the high ranks, actually, because at every rank below mm -hmm. that, it, it it was not the easier way to do it. So, like, yes, there was ex exploitation at top 500. There's, there's so many different branching points to talk about this. I think the easiest solution is to have a separate mode that is, like, an event-timed mode, like Friday night team queue or whatever, or, like, mm -hmm. little mini like tournaments, that. and that's the, the, the best solution for everybody. But the point that SVB is trying to make is that at especially at lower ranks, as, as in everywhere that isn't GM and up, when you six stack, you get into and I, I know Free was been playing in some stacks recently as well. You might recognize this. The matches get harder, and th there's a problem with that. Okay, I'm pleased I finally figured <laughs> this out. Any streamer that is in a game, how many times have you heard to say this? Why does my teammate not know this fundamental thing about Overwatch team mm -hmm. play? Okay? Mm -hmm. you, I'm sure everyone at a high rank has said this at some point. Okay? This is what SVB is talking about. Because you're able, because it is the solo queue system and mechanics or whatever. I mean, you can call it mechanics or now do we call it exploiting an easy character? I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, um, right? They, they, There's a lot of players that can just float up just based on, you know, individual skills, sure. But... Well, there's a lot of happenstance with the strength of the meta of that character. I mean, how many one tricks have we seen rise and fall with the tides of uh, just, you know, are they fundamentally different? Like, I, <laughs> uh, I've been watching Metro streams because you're talking about BlizzCon, but like, he, he you know, he's way down playing Soldier um, and because Soldier's not very good against Double Shield. So mm -hmm. anyway, my, that's my point. Like, there, what you're saying, Chrono, would make sense if we had a static game like CSGO. And it's like, well, if you're good, you, you know, you, you just go up. But there's just so many different routes to get there. And there isn't like a fundamental Overwatch play all the time uh, standard across the ranks, especially if you learn to play at low. If you, if you play at lower ranks, you realize how chaotic it is and how much you don't even need to follow all the rules you think you have to follow. Right. Like you're like, well, I shouldn't push here. I shouldn't do this. But really, if I'm in gold and I'm on Lucio, I should just be killing the whole enemy team. Like, just ignore my team and go kill them. And is that, like, the right team play rule? It's like, yes, I get the rank that I'm supposed to get, but if I'm doing that, am I really learning the game the way we would all want the game to be learned? And the point is, those types of solo queue tactics that you're talking about, one, they don't translate to team play at all, really, but they don't get tested if you don't play up against the team. You're allowed to do more BS things against solo queuers than you are up against the team. And that's why it's a much harder way to play overwatch and I, I think we all know solo queues just way easier than playing in a team against the team like that's like every decision you make is so more crucial when you're in when it's team v team yeah for you do hmm. you have any do you have any thoughts on this i say um when when you said that um there's always these moments where you feel like uh someone has a lack of understanding about something really basic in overwatch <laughs> I, I feel that so much with so many, uh, man, so many tank players that are like new to GM masters. Tank is the worst. This is their very first season, very first season in that rank, which is like some people earn that climb, they deserve it. But some others, like there are Arisas in my game who like say, say you're on watch point Gibraltar, right? And you're defending, like they will literally not get on the point once. Like they will, they will allow the enemy team to push like underneath them on the first point and then touch point and then end up behind them after mm -hmm. they cap, and then the entire way through, they're blaming DPS. But it's like, what can DPS do when you don't take any pressure off them? You don't like, make any space, and and there are like shields that we have to get around, right? It's it's just like that. And and so as the DPS player, you're left thinking like, okay, I have to work with them. I have to I have to try to figure out what I can do best when they're acting like this and when they're constantly giving away space and backing up and like putting shields really passively around corners and and so you're forced into taking flanks where you have to be you know super consistent and you have to play like 200 times better than the enemy team to get any value and then even so like somebody ends up dying on your team and you lose the fight and it's just wow like i can't do anything yeah so i see that as well but isn't that okay so if an orissa is that bad they're, they're objectively not doing well for their team right mm -hmm. 
So by that logic, wouldn't they have a lower chance of winning the game, and therefore wouldn't their SR be lower over the long term? That's like they'd be losing SR. SR is relative though. SR is relative though. You only have to be better than the people you're playing against. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So if you're playing bad, Arisa, you can still be yeah, exactly. terrible and not know anything. You just have to know slightly more than yeah, exactly. So you know, then diamond. Yeah, but then the Arisa is going to lose rank and get into lower rank. I, I still don't but get it because she's think... playing relatively worse than the enemy. Isn't it a free market you know, system? Like, if you're good, you climb. If you're bad, you go down. Don't tell me Elo Hell is real. I'm so confused. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying it's real. I'm just saying that, like, if you pick Orisa instead of Winston, you mm -hmm. probably get Masters instead of Diamond. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, basically. Absolutely. Like, yeah, the like, value to be gained. I, I yeah. play... When I play pick DPS, I, I'm, like, 39 at the moment, and everything I've said about tank players being the worst role by far has been validated by this experience. And I can check it because I go in the replays and see what they're doing, right? If, if, if me as tank or you, Chrono, as tank in the same position, there's just the, the opportunities that are being lost constantly that they just, mm -hmm. they don't even know. They, they have, they've, I, I would describe it as fundamentally not understanding what your job or what your cooldowns do, basically. And that's at Masters, right? And, and then you're saying you fix this by forcing people to play more or like encouraging people to play together more? And you're saying this is how you fix that issue? Yes, yes because these roles that require teamwork, because they can kind of just exist and get slightly more value than the other tanks that are bad getting less, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's much harder. I think it's hard for me to describe this to a player as skilled as yourself because I'm a less skilled player and I've been through these different situations trying to figure this out. And so, so translating it, putting it through a filter of whenever I speak to a really high level player, they're just like, well, I just don't understand. Just, just uh, if they're better than whatever. But the point is they, they don't learn the team things until it, nobody knows how to play tank until upper GM, really. Even lower GM is pretty bad, yeah. honestly. And so like, it's like a binary system. And the reason is because games are so chaotic. Now, luckily, role queue has made it reliable, but it, it, like it hasn't really settled in. Like the, the, the lessons about team play and taking space and pathing these words like don't even get said out loud under gm okay mm. that that's a problem to me and the, the problem is there's not a culture of going up against hard matches and what we're saying is if those players have to play against the team rather than i just sort of exist the other tank sort of exists and the dps carry back and forth meanwhile it's like hard to do anything if your tank doesn't want to play but um they don't end up learning. There's a lot of this where, like, you don't really learn what you're supposed to do. You just sort of exist and, um, you know, don't throw. Whereas yeah, yeah. in a team, if you have to make plays, because the enemy will be made. If you want, SVB knows this for sure, because I know you've watched scrims and, and streams of gold level players. When they're in a team, they're still bad, but they still make plays, right? Whereas oh, yeah. in ranked, even at masters, it's still kind of poke at the choke, not really coordinated. And if you do know how to calm, and this is the, the secret to get out of uh, Masters, in my opinion, is, is just is calm. Calm constantly. If you, uh, you watch Sumito do it, you watch you know, PvP do it. Uh, I struggle a bit more when I'm on damage to do it, but if I'm on any other role that isn't damage, it, I find it very easy. Because the play is so bad at Masters that if you just calm right and do like a fourth of what you should do in a team, then you will win. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, yes, in the system we have now, Good players will get up to GM, but the problem is there's like a lot of them that are just sort of floating in the system, not really learning because there's not a punishing. The gameplay is not punishing enough. Well, yeah, isn't losing but, a game punishing though? No. Well, I don't debate randomly that is. Win easily. Let, you, let, you let can me let randomly me, win a lot of the time. You can randomly lose, but you have influence over your average game, right? So yeah, some games are going to be losses, and you can't even think about it. Some games you get carried and are wins no matter what. But yeah. most games or a lot of games you have like your gameplay affects whether it's a win or loss. So like. Are you trying to argue that we should try to make yeah, everyone like, in the game better? Right. That we increase the level. Let, let me uh, let me chime in here quickly, Corona, because I because on yeah. the Fritos point, I literally have an example from this week. Um, on Thursday, I did a VOD review, or Wednesday, mm -hmm. I did a VOD review of a player who's in silver at the moment, and I know this player very well. She's in my Discord, and she plays in the pugs that I run in my Discord. So she, I've seen her play in a coordinated team environment, and then I saw her VOD, which is just her duoing in, in a ranked game. Now in mm -hmm. her game, she was sort of st she was playing main tank and she was just standing around waiting for her team to group up. Of course, with it being random comp, nobody's grouping up, right? Everybody's just wait like as soon as yeah. they come out of spawn, they're running out of the doors, they're dying. And all that she was doing was stood there waiting for them to group up. And later on in that game, 
two people had died and she rolled in his wrecking ball and she won the fight because she just started the fight. All that was missing is that the team actually needed to start the fight. Now the difference is that when she's in her game with a six stack, they all wait for her. So she doesn't need to spend, waste a minute of her time hanging around hoping everyone regroups for her because she knows everyone's going to do the right thing already. So in that sense, in the, in the competitive play, she's being rewarded for running in when two people are already dead simply because the game is rewarding her solo mentality play. Doesn't matter what your team are doing, just start the fight and chaos will ensue and hopefully someone will win over her doing the theoretically right thing, which is waiting outside of spawn and saying, let's group up guys and then we'll go in together. So This is the very game hard is to see if you're in top 500 already and you already play with people mostly that are know the game. I mean, even, even in top 500, people really also game. know the game. The thing is, like, I would argue that you never know Better how to play the game. Lower. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I say that you never know how to play the game, right? Like, nobody, like, even in top 500, I people agree. mess, like, yeah. there's, every, like, if you play competitively, you know this, like, even in top 500, the games are, like, ridiculous. They don't make any sense. So, like, it's the argument that we should just make everybody, we should educate everybody so that we can play Overwatch how it's supposed to be played. Well, is that otherwise you're rewarding solo queue, which well, yeah. is fine. You know, I think it's you fine, have to, I'm right? Like, that's what we want. But, like, if you want to reward... If you're you're always gonna have teammates that have no idea how to play it as a good teammate, it at even high ranks because of this mm -hmm. because the system is set up to reward what I described and what uh, SVP is describing is like solo queue esque play. So if that's what we want, great. But I don't think anyone signed up to play Overwatch that way. That's my point. But the thing it's, is, no matter what rank you are, sorry, no, no matter what rank you are, you're not gonna play Overwatch the way it's meant to be played for the most part because there's always gonna be that random yeah. variability. You have 12 players on each team, so many different maps, and how many people actually. Look at educational content to understand how the game is supposed to be played. The thing is, Do I agree with you. Like that Masters tanks are trash, though. Like, should our should our the results we have don't translate to other games? Like, if you're the second highest rank in CS:GO, you know all of the execute spots, okay? Because I've I've played it for years. I know this, right? <laughs> like, like well, yeah. at least you know a basic execute, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like you yeah, get up course. to here. You get up to Masters, and I'm saying they. Tanks don't know how to use their basic cooldowns of what they're supposed to do. I mean, Samito was in a game where the Risa didn't know you're supposed to combo halt with Doomfist. Yeah, that happens all the time, like, even in top 100. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, how, the, how do you fix it? You can't like, get, but you, you can't, can't get away it. with that if you you can't get away with that. You can't rank up if the enemy is doing that to you all the time. The only way you rank up in this system because of it, with that is because the enemy isn't doing that all the time. See what I'm trying to say? There is no defining po when everyone plays worse then it's just whoever's less worse. Whereas when the game's harder and everyone's playing the real game, it's way harder. You know what I'm trying to say? Not really, because like, it's all relative, uh, right? Like, the thing is, our ranks are relative. Yeah, and, like, the bar yeah. is higher. The bar is relatively higher. If, so again, like, how, so you're saying that we have to educate everyone, we have to make everybody a better player. But how, how well, is that practical? Right, we're, 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 let's, we're kind of uh, coming around in circles sorry, here. The, it's all right. The yeah. last thing I'll say on that is just, I think it's more about priorities. And I think, you know, it's just, it's a sort of philosophical thing. I think, Corona, you feel like skill will come out on top regardless of everything else, right? In, and, in the long term. And yeah. I guess kind of what Frito and to some extent what I'm saying as well is that the, what, it's about what the game and the ladder prioritizes. Is it messy play and, and just and kind of carrying your way through, quote unquote, over playing the game correctly? But we can agree to disagree on that one. Let's sort of uh, shift to the next direction. Uh, and that's the upcoming BlizzCon. So obviously, I'm sure everyone's real excited. Uh, and there's been a lot of leaks, Frito. You've been hot on the button of these leaks. But what do we kind of one expect to see, and what do we want to see from BlizzCon? Unfortunately, I think for us, we may not see anything we want to see. I, I, that's what I'm thinking. Or feels bad. Players <laughs> that want a hardcore, like regardless of uh, what direction we want them to go, I think most of us would say like throw bones to the hardcore. Like actually make the hardcore like a strong component of the game somehow. And um, apparently Krona's, uh, you know, a big fan of the solo queue system as it is now. So I guess he thinks it, it doesn't it doesn't need to be changed at all. But uh, no, I'm just playing. Um, but <laughs> like, what we're actually going to get at BlizzCon, I think, is is a casual new game, which should mm -hmm. be fun. But um, it's not what any of us want, <laughs> I, I don't think. Uh, maybe maybe you do want it to like play it, but it's not doesn't solve any of the problems that we've talked about thus far, unfortunately. Faria, how do you feel? Because I know we've been uh, ranting on about balancing and all that, but how do you feel about upcoming BlizzCon? I am hopeful for it. I hope um, I hope we get something that at least tells us like what they've been working on for the past few months because we haven't gotten too many tastes of uh, 
new content. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I genuinely hope that there's something there's something tangible about either Overwatch 2 or something that they're working on with Overwatch that'll change up how it's played. Maybe some updates to roll queue, maybe some uh, balance changes, maybe a new cinematic. We'll see. I'm hoping for mm. it. I mean, what? Well, what oh, go on, Corona, you go. Yeah, like I was talking with SVB like before we went live. I'm actually going back to university soon and not like doing Overwatch full time anymore. Like, I'm probably going to quit in like two months here. So, like, for me, I'm just more like curious to see like what approach they take. Because the thing is, for me, I'm no longer like super invested in it. But the thing is, for me, the reason I go back to university is because ultimately I don't think that it's heading in a good direction where it's like sustainable. So, right now, I'm just curious to see how they try to remedy that, right? Because right now, they're talking about releasing a casual game, which is fine. But like, for me, and I feel like for a lot of us here who care about like the PvP competition aspect, I don't think we're going to see anything for us, to be entirely honest. But that's okay, because, I mean, we're not the, the general player base either. Sure. But, I mean, of course, you're, you're important too, Krono. We, we love you out here too. So what would kind Thanks, of, dude. in a hypothetical scenario, I'm, I'm not, you, you, it's unlikely you change your career plans entirely and quit going to university, but what would make you kind of think, damn, maybe I should go back to Overwatch? Okay, if, this is not going to happen, but if they lifted the, what's it called? The tournament restrictions yeah. and they it is okay so increase contenders prize pool and like how frequently it is and then uh, what, what's the other one also allow third-party tournaments and that's seriously it like no overwatch 2 nothing like that just like basically allowing for an esport to be organic because right now they're just you know trying to control everything but if you look at a lot of successful games what they do is they let their community build things let they let sponsors come in and sponsor tournaments and create prize pools and stuff Oh, but yeah, that's probably not going to happen. That's why I said that quite matter of factly. That. That. <laughs> yeah, it's way too late. I don't actually, I don't think they can do that anymore because of all the contracts they signed and how deep they are right now. But yeah, that's where I'm at. And Frida, what are you kind of, I mean, I know you've been following the leaks uh, about Overwatch 2 and stuff. What do you kind of expect to see from BlizzCon? And then we can all kind of talk Overwatch 2 and what it might be and what we might want from it. Well, there's been multiple leaks from different sources at this point now. So combining them together, it's Pretty likely a PVE lore based co op slash single player Left 4 Dead type game, which should be good. And the weird, the weird thing to me about Overwatch is that it just it's so much better as a casual game, but it wants to be an esports too. Esport too. Whenever I play it, as uh, you know, as I said earlier, I have kind of a double life. Which, <laughs> like I play it on the Switch and play with the little Joy Cons and. It's just so much more appealing to to pop in every now and again, and I think Overwatch Two with that gameplay could do really well because Left 4 Dead was a, a pretty big game, and we haven't had one for a while. It seems like companies are just making Valve games because Valve doesn't make games anymore. So like here's a, here's a new CS from Project A, and here's a whatever. Um, that's good, but I hope in tandem with this, they. They, I, I want them to just make ranked more hardcore, essentially, and mm -hmm. or at least give give things for us because it's like I don't know if they expect. I think someone said earlier. I think they expect people to play ranked. I, I I don't know. I think they don't even necessarily mind if you do or don't play ranked. I, that's how I get the feeling, and it doesn't make sense when you also want it to be an esport. So it's just pulling in so many different directions. Where on a new platform, a uh, game platform, if the, if we have a new game platform that can sort of take some of the casual pressure away. I, I would like Overwatch to get the reputation of being a more more hardcore experience, but that's like, none of that's going to come at BlizzCon. I think that would be after BlizzCon where we start to hear about the other features that they've had. They've been working on. We haven't talked about it in a long time, but Roll Queue, I believe, is like step two of three because they did Looking for Group, which... Could have told you a mile away if there's not a reason to group no one's going to do it so no one used it that's a big yeah. shocker on that one <laughs> um but you know roll queue was, was i believe when they're, they're like there's a crawl walk and a run and i think roll queue's the walk and there's going to be a, a run in year next year so that's what we're all excited for i think and it'd be nice if it came earlier rather than later but if the dev team is focused on because the leak says there's no new hero because they want to focus on overwatch 2 then i'm not too optimistic that we're gonna get much love on our end unfortunately but we'll have a new game to play and maybe <laughs> we could just stream the the new pve and that'll be great and and maybe that'll be a lot of fun and 
I get so upset about ranked that I actually wish that they just didn't have one because I think the game would have a much better reputation if it didn't have one. I, I really think that because they, they did it so half heartedly. I think if they just we all enjoyed the game more when it was just quick play. All the other modes work as intended. They do the thing they're supposed to do. Ranked is the only one where most of us go into and the expectations are just almost never met. Like we've taken baby steps towards fixing it, but you're completely right, actually. Ranked is essentially a quick play plus in Overwatch. Because when you think about I other games, like, for Thank example... You. <laughs> oh, you did? Nice. Okay, good. I like it. But, um, for example, if you're, if you're a high-ranked Dota player, like top 200 in Americas, for example, you can queue up for a Dota game and expect a nice, try-hard, sweaty game of Dota. You know? Same thing for League of Legends, I'm sure, for, like, Challenger or whatever the heck they call it. I'm sure that you go up there to get, you know, nice and sweaty games. In Overwatch, when you queue up, even as, like, a top 10 player, Guess what? You get you know you get masters. Everyone just like shit talking on mic. Like some dudes like completely like drunk out of his mind talking on voice comms and like there's no like there's no actual seriousness behind the ranked mode. And I completely agree with you. Why? That'd be great. So actually, if they did do that, where they put the casual content onto Overwatch two and they make Overwatch like the original that we have now, more of like the esports thing, I actually might consider coming back. It's very true. The return of Chrono. Maybe. Faria, how That's do you... a big if. <laughs> a big if. All right. Faria, how do you feel about this? Potentially Frito's idea, just remove quick uh, competitive altogether, or how would you feel? <laughs> it's not a reasonable idea. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just uh, misrepresenting you here, Frito, on purpose. So for the soundbite, yeah. Reddit soundbite. If they do have some kind of, I don't know, like, what do you mean by get rid of competitive? Like, just get rid of the ranking system altogether? And just yeah, it's, it's so not a serious suggestion. No, no, I think it, he he's just saying means, that they might as well. Because yeah, it's because bad. it's so bad that yeah. the game would that be better. True. Like, because right now, most of the frustrations are directed at competitive, right? So if you just took that out, the game would be much happier. Well, we think. Then it'd solve, they'd start like another hundred problems when you pull that straw out, but I... maybe. Yeah, I think I think there's like a lot of levity and a lot of like good to come from it turning into a more of a casual thing and it not having any like, I guess, um, purpose behind it. So like no, no goals, no, no, like seriousness behind it. But there's also just like, I don't know, I know that me and a lot of other people, we play Overwatch because it has that competitive aspect and it has that aspect that makes you want to go like, you know, I can do this better and I can improve this way and I can mm -hmm. like, you know, I can I can uh, work on this and I can get better. And like there are not there are not a lot of other games that make me want to do that. And I don't know. I don't know how to keep that and, you know, make it a bit more bearable. It's interesting because at the end of every discussion, we've almost come back to the same point. Overwatch trying to please everybody with everything. And every time we come back to that same thing of like, uh, it's good, but I mean, it's not quite as good as they wanted to be because it's catered to someone else. And, you know, that's kind of what we seem to be coming around in circles to. So is that the fundamental well problem? Is that the fundamental problem that Blizzard needs to kind of listen I to? I think so. That and communication. I think that's a pretty fair way to put it. Frito? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say. Faria, would you agree? I agree, yep. All right, well, see, that's that seems like a nice rounded way. One final thought then, if, as Frito suggested, perhaps a Blizzard employee is listening to this humble uh, Twitch stream slash podcast, what would you want them to hear? Well, from my end, if we can only say one thing, I would just say be more open to communicate with the people that play your game so that they know what you're doing and hopefully why you're doing it. And that's the number one thing for me, at least. Frito? I'd me say too. there there's definitely ways to embolden the hardcore players, the streamers, the people that are excited about teaching the complexity of the game. Obviously, I'm talking about myself and, and probably SVB <laughs> and Chrono and all these other content creators that, that in, enjoy this and want to get into it. Like, we can help bring your casuals along, right? So embolden mm -hmm. us rather than hoping that you just direct most things towards towards them. So, you know, I, I'll i leave it at that mm -hmm. without going out for another 10 minutes. Faria? I would say that... Um... I would say that we love this game and we want the best for it. And it really hurts to see that it's kind of, I guess, in a way, like dying of neglect, right? It's just like, it just, it hurts. You know, we want the best for this game. And if you guys communicate with us a bit more and if they tell us more, even, I remember somebody in chat earlier said that Jeff, before he mentioned that he, he he's not, like the dev team isn't super transparent about their like um, their direction and their you know their their focus because they don't want to say something and then not put that out onto live right which I get but it's like if you let us know your intention 
that's way better than leaving us in the dark for months at a time. And I think that would help so much. Yeah. So to sum us all up, uh, communicate more Blizzard and just show us show us you care. If you, if you, if you love me, let me know in the words of uh, Chris Martin. Um, but I think we'll, that's a good place to call it there. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I, honestly, the time has flown by. But uh, I'm, I'm so delighted that you guys could be here. And I, I'm really grateful to you for, for turning up, sharing your thoughts. And I'm sure everyone watching feels 10 years the wiser. So thank you, Chrono. Thank you, Frito. Thank you, Freya. Any parting thoughts before we uh, call it quits to the stream? No. Nope. I've spoken plenty. Yeah. Thanks right. for having me on. That's all I can say. Thanks so much, thank guys. Thank you so much for the chat, guys. Yeah, yeah thank it you so much. Nice. And uh, keep uh, keep well, and we'll see you guys soon.